America's team crop. No. crumbling at the seams. We're talking about the ceiling falling apart. Last night they wanted to open the roof for the first time in a long time. Our team stinks, but at least we'll showcase the stadium and then a piece of sheet metal comes flying down and you see old buddy, oh, 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 what was that? Well, it was actually metal from the roof, pal. Yeah, Jerry World obviously at one time was the cock of the walk. And speaking of cock of the walk, this is a man who had to go up there and actually drill another piece of sheet metal into some more railings up there because they couldn't get it out completely. And they didn't know if one gust of wind somehow comes through Jerry World, another piece of sheet metal comes all the way down. So the roof sucks, the team sucks. And the floor sucks. <laughs> yep. Brendan Aubrey has his first miss at home last night. He's obviously the imprint. Slips all over the place. Oh, no. You think to yourself, well, how'd you slip? This guy's been 34 for 34 in Jerry World as the Dallas Cowboys kicker. How'd you? Well, you got to remember, Paul Tyson had that thing up. They just put it down. Oh, that's oh. Right. So the turf stinks. The roof stinks. Yep. The team stinks. Everything about it stinks. And uh, the Houston Texans took advantage of that. Oh, yeah. Congratulations to the Houston Texans on a big win. C.J. Stroud obviously enjoys the hell out of Nico Collins being back. That first touchdown where Larry Tunzel was two yards down the field, I, I think that was a little. Yeah, come on. Now, obviously, Laramie Tunzel was acting in a fashion as if he knew what they called. And I think Joe Buck and Troy Aikman did a great job of saying this is definitely a penalty. But, like, okay. And then Joe Mixon goes absolutely bananas. I, I mean, multiple touchdowns, three of them. He goes for an insane amount of yards. And uh, I think he wanted to really, you know, on prime time, let people know that Joe Mixon is still Joe Mixon. This dude is missed in Cincinnati. Now, all those Cincinnati Bengals offense does a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. And Joe Burrow's spinning it all over the place. I mean, the loss of Joe Mixon is certainly something that's going to be felt. And the addition of Joe Mixon to this Houston Texans team has been massive. Now, everybody talked about Stephon Diggs going over there. And he's obviously injured for the rest of the year. Godspeed to you, Stephon Diggs. But the Joe Mixon signing, I think, is one of the biggest ones mm -hmm. across the entire NFL. He redoes the math for these defenses. Oh, yeah. And with that offensive line, with how they've been struggling protecting, you know, C.J. Stroud, they've been struggling over the last few weeks. Having a dominating performance like that, running the ball against the Dallas Cowboys defense that has sucked uh, for, since the beginning of the year. Yep. And, you know gap signness and toughness and physicality and everything that you need to be a great defense against the run and in the NFL. The Houston Texans exploited, and uh, if I'm a Texans fan, I'm waking up this morning feeling great about my team. If I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan, I'm thinking about becoming a Houston Texans fan. Should. That is, that is the thought that I should be having. Now, there's a lot of people chatting like, why would you go to a game? If you were a Dallas Cowboy fan, we got some stats from Hembo. Do you know how many seconds and minutes, uh, not this one, the other one, please. Do you know how many seconds they've been leading games at home? None. Oh, Jeez. None. Last six home wow. games, we've had no happiness, no happiness. Two minutes and 15 seconds. We're back. Wow. We're a good Lions team, We too. are back. We are a team. And then no happiness, no happiness, no happiness. Okay, so you're talking about home games being miserable from start to finish. And last night, obviously, was the first time a stadium just fell apart. So before the game even started, they were losing. Yeah. So you're talking about no seconds of leading games before the game even started this entire thing. And then let's go to the offseason. As Foxy put up there a little bit, pinching pennies and losing games. Good headline there. Ooh, wow. That's good headline from Debo. There, there have been some absolutely terrible ones sure. uh, throughout the last couple of days from D-Bone, but he's not bad at piecing these things together because that's exactly what Hembo sent over. Pinch of pennies losing games. Now, if you do recall, this past offseason, everybody thought about Derrick Henry going to the Dallas sure. Cowboys. And Jerry said, well, I don't think we can afford him or whatever the case is. Then he obviously pays $60 million to Dak, pays whatever to CD, does the entire thing. But once you start looking at like the stats of how these guys have done against the Dallas Cowboys and where they're paid at. Now, Saquon Barkley, you know, he uh, won bananas. His contract ranks 190th in the NFL. Hmm, okay. In average annual value per okay. year. Saquon Barkley does. Jeez. I good. think about the Giants. They said we can't afford them. Yep. No chance. Dallas obviously looked into it because they got no running game at all. They said we can't afford them. And then you think about Joe Mixon, what he did, 276th in the NFL, his mm. contract, average annual value. Yep. And then Derrick Henry, obviously, 287th in NFRB is the news. I don't know what the hell that means. But nonetheless, Derrick Henry, Joe Mixon, and Saquon Barkley, all cow all running backs that could be for the Cowboys, theoretically, uh, they go for 405 yards from scrimmage on 63 touchdowns, five touchdowns uh, uh, mm. versus Dallas. So Jerry Jones has to sit up there, oh. okay, as the stadium's falling apart. And his team leads no seconds at all of any of these games. And then he has to go on these Tuesday morning shows, 
radio shows, mm -hmm. and they go, hey, there's a lot of things being pointed out about your lack of uh, doing anything to make this team better and kind of just living by the people that you've had here, you've developed here, you've coached here, everything like that. He goes, I'm not here to fucking listen and talk to you about everything I've done wrong. Well, it's like, Jerry, your team sucks, your building sucks, and a lot of people are starting to think... Uh, you suck. Big. Even the people that had faith in you, like me. I was a big Jerry Jones fan. Mm -hmm. Sure. Strictly because of the way he went about doing his business. I appreciate the fact that this man goes all in. I appreciate the fact that he got money from oil, all right? Sure. Then he takes that money, goes all in on the Cowboys, mm -hmm. and then he creates the greatest sports brand in the world. The most mm -hmm. highest valued, the greatest brand. He's on prime time every single week. I mean, you're talking about just a business savant mm -hmm. in Jerry Jones. Now, him being the GM, him being the, probably the coach, him being everything yeah. else. I enjoyed because it's like you want an owner that loves ball. You want an owner that's involved. And they had success, you know, 30 years ago. <laughs> but now it's at the point where everything Jerry does sucks. Yep. Yeah. His business plans suck. Mm -hmm. The AI Jerry they got down in the lobby sucks. Stadium. His stadium sucks. Yeah. His team sucks. His ideas on what they should do for the team suck. The way he talks in interviews sucks. It's like everything about Jerry Jones sucks at this point. And I'm bummed out about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was a hell of a run. It was a great American <laughs> dream story. Yeah, truly. It was a great American dream story. But now it's just like Jerry Jones sucks, and we just have to face that head on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know there's a lot of people that have been saying that for a long time, and I know you've been excited uh, to watch the demise of Jerry Jones. As somebody that, like, uh, you know, was, this guy's hilarious, uh, is how I kind of viewed it. This guy sucks. And on the flip side, the Houston Texans, <laughs> they used to, yeah, they, they used, used to be suck. the shit. Yeah. Very yeah. recently. They used to suck yeah, bad. Yeah. Now they're really good. And that sucks for the Indianapolis Colts, yeah. who are in the same exact division. Now, am I scared that the Houston Texans are going to go on and be undefeated for the rest of the year and the Colts have no chance of making it pretty much if that's the case? Mm -hmm. Because of what they did to the Dallas Cowboys? No. Sure. With that being said, they looked very good last mm -hmm. night. Yep. And it was not just, you know, a bad Dallas Cowboys team. It was the execution. It was how they went about it, how CJ looked, how the offensive line looked, how the defense looked. I mean, it was just like everything that the Houston Texans did, you watch. This is like football judgment, which is going to come into play tonight for the college football playoff. It's like football judgment. They looked good. Yep. Yeah. The Houston Texans looked the best they've looked in a long time. And is that because they're playing the Cowboys, which is, you know, strength of schedule zero if you were to be giving points out? Or is it because the Houston Texans are back? We shall see. The talk to tables here at Boston Connor. And at Ty Schmidt, con man. Not a terrible week 11 slate, but last night certainly sucked. Yeah, last night did suck, just like Jerry Jones, to your point. And you can probably throw his boy in there, because if his boy didn't suck, then he'd probably be where Jerry Jones is right now instead of Jerry still running the show. But the Texans are impressive. Like Nico Collins being back on the field, that completely changes their entire offense. Mm -hmm. John Mechie, who, you know, he missed his entire rookie year, he's... Playing pretty good ball because Nico wasn't in for as many snaps, I feel like, as we would usually see. He's probably still kind of getting back from that hamstring. But with him, with what that offensive line did after the questions, you know, we've kind of had and AQ Shipley has pointed out to us when it comes to the Texans, what they were able to do against the Cowboys. Now, again, it is the Cowboys. What, what were we they ranking? Suck. This? They're a really bad yeah. football team. Yeah. And like even that graphic, like Joe Mixon wasn't a free agent technically like Saquon and Derrick Henry, but still could have traded, a, what, a fifth or a sixth round pick for him because they released him and then the Texans called the Bengals and they're like hey don't yeah. release him we'll give you a bag of balls yeah, they, re for they Joe. released him gave a bird call yeah. to everybody hey Joe Mixon is potentially available yeah. obviously Jerry said still I got other shit to do mm -hmm. no thanks I gotta ruin this franchise a little bit more yeah. mm -hmm. I gotta beat this thing down to the ground yeah it I gotta force the public to have to watch my team mm -hmm. okay which is I think the biggest issue with the whole thing yeah I used to enjoy the fact that Jerry Jones used to hold the public hostage hey you're going to watch my team. Okay, Jerry. Hey, I'm part of the TV negotiation, right? So you, I don't tell these people that they should have America's team on there. They know mm -hmm. they should have America's team on there. And obviously, there's been sports media programs that have made a living off of talking about just the Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Because if you talk about Dallas Cowboys, everything goes up. Well, it's like, is that because the Dallas Cowboys are on national TV every single week? If you were to put, I don't know, Los Angeles Chargers with Herbert and Harbaugh on national television every single week, do you think that numbers will go up whenever you talk about the Los Angeles Chargers going forward? Uh yeah, it's all kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy, seemingly, with the entirety of it all. And it's like now we're at the point where we're getting punished by these motherfuckers. And don't look down. They're on next Monday as well. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, next Monday. And then we mentioned the Simpsons game yesterday, which... Hey, listen, we can't flex out of this because we did a bunch of animation for Bart Simpson, you know, mm -hmm. watching the Cowboys. But that is the worst part because there is, like... 
Jerry Jones is going to be running the Cowboys until he dies. Mm-hmm. It's just it's as simple as that. A guy like that isn't going to wake up tomorrow and be like, you know what? Maybe I maybe I, the game has passed me by. I need to step down. Like that's not happening. He's going to do this until he dies. And because they are the Cowboys, like there is never going to be a world like they're probably going to suck next year. They basically have paid three guys, and everyone else is kind of just all right. We'll just fill in the cracks, and maybe we can get a couple vets. Like they're going to get five prime time, five or six prime time games next year. They'll be pretty much the same team. Only Dak will be. You know who knows how healthy he'll be. Like it's just it's because he's such a good businessman. They're in this position, but now it's also like. The game clearly has passed him by, but he's been so successful. Like he's not going to hand it off to anyone. So we're just in a an endless rut, and it's going to be like that pretty much until he dies. I think. Can't wait to watch it every mm-hmm. single week. Yeah. What an mm-hmm. honor it is for us to watch right. a star on a helmet do their thing. And I have a lot of respect for a lot of people that have played for the Cowboys throughout the years. That is not that is not a shot at them. It is not their fault that they're Dallas Cowboys. But when it comes out about the practice facility tours, yeah. while training for another team, and then selling offices next to a practice or a practice field that anybody could get, it's like. Like, this guy sucks as an owner. Yeah. Like, this guy, yeah. for shoot, sucks as a great businessman. Unbelievable. Great businessman. Pride business number one. Sucks as an NFL owner. And I think that was fully on display last night. Nine-year NFL vet Darius J. Butler looks super cool today. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Looked super dumb yesterday, though, uh, alongside you. I think I maybe influenced you a little bit with that pick, picking the Cowboys. I was, I thought – where it was what, a heart. Four, four seconds into the game with the Nico touchdown, obviously <laughs> got called back and they ended up getting a 45-yard touchdown anyway. But, yeah, it's, it's embarrassing. A lot of people uh, kind of talked about the lack of moves coming into the season. I know Orlowski was like, hey, you know, somebody he responded to a tweet. Nobody saw this 3-7 and seven team coming. Dan Orlowski definitely did, definitely called it. But, yeah, you even trading – even having Cooper Cushion there. Like, obviously, this is the guy who's been there. He's been familiar, but you traded for Trey Lance. This is a guy that you love coming out. How I forgot not, about Trey Lance. How, how yeah. do you not even have him on the field in the case of your $60 million uh, quarterback going down? And you look at the team, you talked about paying some guys. Like, they have the premium, quote-unquote, premium positions paid, the quarterback, the receiver, the corner, the pass rusher. Like, you got all those, but nope. You didn't do anything in the trenches on both sides of the ball. You know, linebacker depth. Obviously, you are replacing the running back. So all the things that you knew coming into the season, they just stunk. And, yeah, the businessman side of Jerry has been great. And that's why he has had us as prisoners being able, having to watch him because there are so many Cowboys fans out there and so many Cowboys haters out there. So when you talk about them, obviously the ratings are going to be what it is. But, yeah, it, 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 that watching them on primetime, and once again, we'll have to do it over and over and over again. But that just highlights it. And it's just terrible. All Coop, around terrible. Cooper Cush wasn't that terrible. He's slinging it. Slinging it. Cooper Cush it. gets out there and does it. But for one reason or another, they continue to suck down there. And the building falling apart on primetime is like a perfect way to just kind of, yeah. like, hey, this is what, this is your world now. This mm-hmm. is Jerry world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is your world. Mm-hmm. It's on primetime, on Monday Night Football, and your building's falling apart. It's all right, Cowboys fans. It's it, all right. It, yeah, it's okay. That guy who is standing next to the sheet metal, by the way, Brother, go down and cut your leg off. What are, what are we doing, man? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are you doing dodging that thing, dude? Stand under it. Hit yeah, an artery. I guess the um, I guess the news was there was another piece of sheet metal that was like kind of wedged up in the walkways up there, and they couldn't get it down from where it was. So the NFL deemed it too dangerous to continue to play if that was going to remain the case. So they said, hey, uh, you, you know, to hell with it. Let's just go. <laughs> yeah. Sheet metal's got a new home now. Forever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll just go ahead and drill this thing Crazy. into the catwalk up there.